All right, everybody, welcome back to Cast and Spear. Today we have Brett Whitman from Spear Factor. And recently we were in Baja and he brought this homemade flasher that I thought was insane. It also helped you catch that yellowtail on the pole spinner for the first oh, time yeah. too. So <laughs> this thing yeah. is legit and I was hoping that he can explain how he made it so that you guys can make one at home yourself. So let's uh, dive in. Yeah, it's another episode of Ghetto Spearfishing. Right? Welcome. So, <laughs> why not? Um, again, like you probably have seen these, these buzz bombs before people use them for fishing, but not quite like this. I think Chris Coates talks about it where he talks about making it from a uh, box of wine, the inside, shiny material. Well, that's pretty much what we did here. Only we used an emergency blanket, mylar, um, and you can make like probably 20 out of them with this. And we took packaging tape over the sides of both sides of the mylar, and then we cut it just to make the, uh, the tentacles so that it looks like that when it's in the water and attracts the, uh, the bigger fish. And the other little thing we added on here was bows, like Christmas bows. Like you add, I, I just basically either tied it on a zip tie, you can tie it on however you want. These Christmas bows are nice because they just add a little more shine. You can see them right now, just shining. And, um, and it's like, it literally takes about five minutes to make this thing. It's super easy. And more importantly, it's effective. Some of the flashers are like, you know, 50, 80 bucks. And these things are so easy to make. If you can't see it on this one, but we literally just took this mylar and wrapped it around the weight. And then I just zip tied it. Again, like super cheap, no big deal. Zip tied the front and the back. Enough with the eye sticking out so that you can either put your cable or your mono around. And I recommend, like it depends on where you're diving. Here in Southern California, you don't need cable. Uh, in the tropics, you probably gonna need cable to get a lot of sharks coming up trying to pull and snap on your stuff. Very, very simple though. And the cool thing is it's really effective. Like we used it in Baja, like John was saying, um, to bring the yellows in real close because we were using pole spears. The other thing you can add to your flasher or add it to the end is like, this is like a little throw flasher, but I'll add weight to this guy. Like I'll even add this flasher on there and tie it on there. But pom poms, like as ghetto as it sounds, work really amazing. Like especially this color pom poms. This is all the only one my daughter will let me grab, but um, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But uh, like pom poms, when they're falling in the water, I mean, look, it's killer. Yeah, it works. It's like, again, saving money and shit that works. I don't like spending time, wasting time on stuff that doesn't work or money. So this way I kind of save like money and I have stuff that works. Um, and then you also have these uh, fishing lures. Yeah, so these are just fishing lures, a weight just shoved in them, uh, little teasers, and we just zip, we just uh, crimp them, you know, a couple feet up. Try to do about five feet apart from each other, and they're looking like squid, so the fish will come in on those. And then usually above that, we would have the mirrors, the real flashers to get them, and then they, the fish like to see eyeballs. So honestly, they'll come in, the mirrors will attract the fish. They'll see these flashers down there and then they'll come in and they'll swim down and take a look at them. Like you can even take this guy and take a black Sharpie and just put a mark on it and you'll notice the fish will come right in on it and check them out. So that's why if you notice some flashers, you have the teasers along with um, the actual like mirror flashers, the disco balls and all that stuff. It's because these are the things with the eyes that actually get the fish to come right in. So then you just have your cable attached to some paracord? Yeah, again, like anything that flows, you can get little pelican floats anywhere, but like I literally just took paracord. Um, depends on how deep you want to dive. I don't try to like push it, you know, every dive. So I try to have my flasher around 30, 40 feet of water. Um, it depends on where the fish are, uh, where the fish are in the biz, right? You don't want to do blind drops in your flasher. It's kind of pointless. Um, but if there's like 40 feet of this, I'll put them at 40 feet and I'll just dive on the flashers, you know, and it's literally just cable for the sharks up to uh, crimped and I type a loop and then I just do a bowline attached to the uh, paracord. 
It's not real hard. Um, you can even do it with bullet floats, cut the middle out and just wrap this around a bullet float. Cable's kind of a pain in the ass to deal with, but depending on where you are, it could be a necessity. You know, I hate to like put all this time and effort and stuff, and it doesn't take a lot of time, but it's effort and have a shark come and bite it and all your stuff falls, you know. So with this run usually probably 20 bucks or the material or? Um, if maybe, probably not even that. Uh, the most expensive parts are these skirts. And then you get the weight, you know, uh, probably about twenty five dollars for the whole thing, I guess. Perfect. Yeah, super cheap. Super cheap and effective. effective. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks, Brett, for showing us how to do this. If you're gonna make a float yourself, definitely send us a picture of it. Um, it'd be really cool to see your guys's homemade floats and designs. Make sure you like this video, subscribe if you want to see more. Check out Brett at SpearFactor.com, yeah. and he's gonna be having a whole bunch of cool podcasts and videos about spearfishing. Until next time. All right. See, ya. See you guys.